to him. Now let us go to Leviticus chapter 2, verse 2 to 4. Look at this. Leviticus chapter 16. Sorry, 16. Sorry, po. Leviticus 16, verse 2 to 4. Verse 2. Which says here, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother. Kausapin mo, kapatid mo. Something like that. The Lord speaking to Moses. The Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he cannot at all times in the holy place within the world before the mercy seat which is upon the ark that he die not for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat verse 3 thus Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering verse 4 and he shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and he shall gird it with a linen girdle, and with the linen mitre shall be shall he be attired. These are holy garments, therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. So here God gave a specific command to Moses what Aaron should do. So when we go and when Aaron do go to the tabernacle, he should follow all of this. And not only that, when he go to the tabernacle, he need to revere God in his life. He need to respect God. He need to, he need to sanctify himself or else he will die also. That is what the word of God says. Let us go to verse 2 of Leviticus chapter 16. He says, The Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother. You talk to your brother that he cannot all time into the holy place. He, just, he cannot just go to the tabernacle from the time that he wanted. If he wants now, he will go. If, if not, he will not. No. There is a proper time. There is a proper attire that when he go there, that he need to follow. Or else he will not be able to do it. And what the Lord says, he will die. If he will not follow what the Lord had commanded him. It, because it says, it says within the world before the mercy seat which is upon the earth, that he die not. Because if he will disobey God, he will die. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. And here, we can see how Aaron should be able to go to the tabernacle. In verse 3, it says here, Thus, so, thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with what? With a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram, a ram for a burnt offering. So when he go there, he will bring a sacrifice. Meaning he will sacrifice to the Lord. That is the way he will, he will worship God. And in verse 4, he shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and he shall be girded with linen girdle, and with the linen my, uh, mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. Even in putting the attire, he should wash himself. Because the word of God, these are, these are holy garments. These are God's. This belongs to God, see? And we can see from here that even the time when the Lord, when the Lord commanded Moses, Aaron cannot just go inside the tabernacle the way he want. Or else he will die. For a high priest will go to the tabernacle, they will only come to the, 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 to the holy or to the tabernacle or the holy of holies once a year. They will offer a sin offering for Israel and they will also make an offering for themselves. But here, they see that, but for Aaron not to do that, he will not, he will not glorify God in his life. And here, he should bring offering and he shall put on the holy garments. So here we can see how God is serious about his word. I hope you can see the, the message from these from this verses. That there is a message that was given to them that they need to follow. They need to follow and they cannot disobey that. And when they do that, they will do exactly the way God wanted it to be or to happen. That is what the Lord is telling them. And for the payment of that is death. For the wages of sin is death. So here we can see you can, we cannot just 
do the way we want when the Lord wants us the other way. And we will not be able to glorify God. And you know what? For us, I hope we could see this in our life. That God is giving a specific command. We are not Levites. We are not Israelite people. But in the New Testament, the word of God was given to us to obey. And when we obey this, we should be serious. And the word of God says, when we do this, we should do it with love. A lot of people thinking that when they obey God, thinking that they love God. No. Like this, what I'm trying to say, if you really want to obey God, it should be out of love. But here we can see how God's serious about His word. You know how, you know what, how God's serious about His word? He has His standard, not our own standard. I want you to see this. I will not go to that verses, but I will just mention this. I believe in Matthew chapter 7. What the Lord Jesus Christ said, when, you look, when a man looked to a woman with a lustful desire, what does it say? He's already committing adultery. That is the standard of God. And what does he say? When there is an anger in your heart to your brother, what is that? You are already what? A murderer. That is the standard of God that we need to see, that we need to obey. And if, how can we do that? Well, we can, we, can do, we, can, we can do all those things by the grace and the mercy of God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why this is, makes us unique as people of God. A lot of people proclaiming about the Word of God, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. But for us, as a believer, when we accept the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, He sent us the Holy Spirit. He will send the Comforter. And He will be the one to strengthen us. He will be the one to help us to learn from the Word of God. And not because of our own self. See that? God wants us to learn His Word through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because in us alone, we will not be able to understand the Word of God. We cannot obey the Word of God the way we want it. And that's why God giving us the paraclete or the, the comfort of the helper to help us obey God in our life. So here we can see how, how uh, God is serious about His Word. See, in the Old Testament, I don't know in, in our time now, maybe if that things, those things still happen, maybe a lot of us die already. The rapture. Amen? Something Anyone about which the pilgrims in the, in the Old Testament uh, but, still uh, happening uh, right see, now, as they made their way, all dead. Go, uh, but by the grace of God. By night. You know what? I just told you that chapter 16 and 17 of Leviticus is about atonement. But you know what? The Lord Jesus shall Christ preserve thee from, from all evil. Our sin. He shall preserve thy but soul. But I want you to see that. I want you to see this, that how God is serious about His word. So Samuel, could you please go to Isaiah 53 verse 10 before I continue to read? I have some more verses. Don't worry. But let me just go through this. Isaiah 53 verse 10. I want you to see what the Lord Jesus, what God did to His Son because of our disobedience to God. Let me just read this. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, to bruise Jesus. He had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. And he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. But look, before that, you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ, He just not. We see, we seen, we have seen that He also struggled because of when He said that, Father, the petition will let this cup pass from me. But you know what? We see that the Lord Jesus Christ did not only get got hurt by the physical uh, bruises that He had. He He got hurt the most is when the Father turned His back on Him. That is the most painful thing that happened to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says here, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That how, that how God serious about his word. In order for us to have a perfect atonement, you know what he did to his son? He bruised his son. He stamped on his son. 
because of our sin. I want you to see the gravity of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. You know what? If I'm we are going to uh, interpret that, when the Lord, our sin is like this, but later on I will just give you verses. He took our sin, he put it on his son, and when he put it, the, the sin on his son, he crumbled on his son. Not on the sin, but on his son. Because the sin of us is on his son. That's how serious God about his word. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So here we can see how we benefited from the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. But what he did is not something easy. He did all the difficult things for us. Just like I've said before, we are entitled of one thing in this world. We are worthy of one thing in this world. At least one thing. We are entitled and worthy to go to hell because of our sin. But because of that, the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross, he clothed us with his righteousness. If you're going to look at the... It, uh, later on, I will, just read, I will uh, say it again. But let us go again to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 5. Galatians 4, verse 4 to 5 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adump- adoption of Son. And now we became the Son of God because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. But look, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, Brother Jeremiah uh, uh, gave these verses before. Hebrews 9, 12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained the eternal redemption for us. We are redeemed because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. He did not he did not pay for our sin for the blood of the goats and calves, but by his own blood. He paid for that, that we might obtain redemption. That our relationship to God will be restored. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ is, did. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ, for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven. He went to heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He gave the perfect sacrifice in heaven just for us to be saved. That's how God serious about this world. That's why if you're going to study the Old Testament, we see that an animal dying for the, on the behalf of the Israelite people. But now, in our, in our behalf, Christ died for us. That in one we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's who Christ in our life. Jesus died for us. And I hope you will be serious about this. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews 10 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. And not the very image of the things. Can, can never with those sacrifices. It can never be done by those sacrifices. Which they offered year, year by year continually. Make the comers their own perfect. What does it mean? The sacrifice that was done before can never make us perfect. But you know what? We are now perfect in the sight of God. Because the perfect sacrifice was given to us. And now, if we're going to study the Leviticus, that how that is just a shadow, but it happened in the life of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we benefited from that. And that's how we should obey the word of God in our life. Christ died for us. And I hope as a Christian, it will not be a common word. It will not be a common thing that when we hear that Christ died for us, oh, I know that Christ died for me. No. We should see the gravity of what he did for us. How he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who can do that? No one can do that. 
No one can do that. But let me read one more verse before I close. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, Hebrews 10, 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter in the, into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You see, Aaron cannot just go into the holy place, with a, especially if he will not sanctify himself or else, or else he will die. But now I want you to see the difference. I want you to see what the Lord Jesus Christ did in our life. I will read it again. Hebrews 10, 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You know what? Now we can go to the holy of the holies in heaven because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not already seated in heaven. And that what is the Lord Jesus Christ, what the Lord Jesus Christ did in our life. Because of his death, because of his blood, he offered himself for us. And now, you know what? Although we are not worthy to go to, to, go to heaven because of the Lord, he did that because of his love to us. He offered his blood, his own blood. He bought us with his own blood. And now, and I hope and I pray that we see how God serious about this word. And you know what? One thing that we can continue to, to, uh, to glorify God in our life, let us read this word day and night. Day and night. You know what? Once you start to do that in your life, you will see the goodness of, love, the goodness of God in your life. Even here in the book of Leviticus, when I started reading the Old Testament again, I see the goodness of God in my life. Sometimes tears flowing down from my eyes because of the goodness of his love to us. Those who study the Old, Test the, the Old Testament survey, now they see the goodness of God in the Old Testament and how he fulfills his love in the New Testament. So I hope and I pray this will continue to encourage us and will continue to give us strength to, cook, to keep on keeping on for the Lord. People may say a lot of things for us, but the important is that we need to obey God in our life. We need to res respect him and we need to rebe rebe him in our life. Amen. Let us all stand up and let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, O God, this morning to your word. Help us, O 